It is March 19th, 2014. Christina Bosanakis here. I'm joined by Mike Welsh from the Daily Racing Forum and uh, another lovely day here in Southern Florida. Mike, the weather, we got a little bit of rain over our weekend, uh, Monday night into Tuesday. Yeah, but it didn't affect my golf game. It got out of here <laughs> yesterday morning on time, so I was able More to get to the golf course. Exactly, exactly. It turned out to be a beautiful day, and we have a beautiful day today. A little bit of wind, but not uh, anything, I think, to be concerned about. The racetrack is fast. The turf course is firm. Matter of fact, the racetrack is very fast, and the turf course seems to be very firm, and uh, until we see otherwise, you don't want to get too far back, I don't think, over either course uh, today. We can talk a little bit uh, how that will affect uh, today's races. We do have a carryover in the uh, 20 cent Rainbow Six, uh, $3.3 .3 million, and that starts in race five. A little unexpected drama in the Rainbow Six on Sunday. Uh, for those of you who have, were not here or did not uh, hear what happened in the uh, next to last race of the Rainbow Six sequence, uh, Edgar Jocker, Ed, Edgar Prado, uh, fell off his horse going into the first turn. There was some crowding. He got uh, bumped around. He came off his horse. He was lying on the track, uh, kind of stunned at first, and the stewards decided for the safety of Edgar, uh, they called the race a no contest. They had the other riders pull their horses up as they came down the stretch to make sure that nobody ran into Edgar. I think by the time uh, the horses reached there, Edgar had scrambled under the rail. He did suffer a badly bruised shoulder. Uh, he is out of action today. He is not named on any horses tomorrow. According to his agent, Bob Claceris, if all goes well, Edgar will be back here on Friday. Well, that's good to hear. Good news. And uh, I might add, the Rainbow Six was basically canceled for the day because of that. They paid out the entire pool as if it was a pick five. So the $3.3 million carryover that went into play on Sunday is now carried over today. We'll have a $3.3 plus million a carryover for today's card. Yeah, and that starts in uh, race five. And also looking ahead, Mike, we have the uh, Florida Derby. The field is starting to take shape. Cairo Prince, uh, he seems to be the early favorite or one of the early favorites for the Florida Derby, but there's some other horses in there. He'll be the favorite, I think, but uh, it is a good field. We have Wildcat Red and uh, General A-Rod who finished one, two in the Fountain of Youth. They're definite. Constitution, who is undefeated, but is... Uh, untested against Stakes Company. He's a definite. Found out today that Matador for trainer Norman Cass uh, Mark Cassie will run in the uh, Florida Derby. He will have blinkers on and I guess Julian Leperu will ride. Uh, trainer Nick Zito today said he's seriously considering the race for a spot who won the swale and also social inclusion. <clears throat> the three-year-old sensation now off his record-setting win here the other day over Honor Code. Also a possibility. Uh, his owner will make a decision after he works on Saturday. Uh, Nick Zito will also make a decision on spot after he works up at Palmetto's on Saturday. So a few horses that we're looking forward to and looking forward to seeing uh, later on uh, next week for the Florida Derby and what a card it is, a seven stakes on Florida Derby Day. But uh, Mike, a horse that's uh, been a talking horse around uh, these parts, Mucho Macho Man, was in California. He ran out there in the big cap, came back, and uh, now he, was, uh, he came back out for the first time uh, on Monday, I believe. Right. Kathy said she finally went back to the track Monday. Obviously a disappointing performance at Santa Anita in the Santa Anita in the big cap. Uh, Kathy says he's doing well. She's just going to wait and see how he progresses before uh, deciding when to work him. And then after that, once he gets going again, they'll make a decision on where or when. Uh, he's going to run next. One decision it seems like she might have made is that he's going to uh, stay here uh, for the winter. We are racing here all winter. The backside will be open. And uh, Mucho Macho Man, who spent last spring at Fair Hill and last summer at Saratoga, might wind up spending the spring and summer here, right here uh, over the track. He really likes a lot, Gulfstream Park. And then before we move on to today's card, we can just take a quick look back at uh, last Saturday's action, the Honey Fox. It was a grade two race at center court. Mike, I, to be honest, I had written her off a little bit. She did win the Honey Fox la last year in 2013. I thought that she might have, uh, her best days were behind her, but she ran a pretty nice race uh, on the... On, uh, this is a huge effort yeah. and a big... Uh, uh, Kudos goes out to trainer Rusty Arnold for having this horse ready. Never lost confidence in her. She had a little uh, muscle injury that they stopped on her, but uh, she comes off the layoff. She just lasts here, uh, but uh, not only did she come off a layoff and an injury, but she also broke through the gate prior to the race. If you saw Barbara Livingston's pictures of it, it was pretty spectacular. 
Uh, good job by uh, Julian Laparu to stay on, get her right back, collect it again into the gate. And Rusty Arnold said, in all my days of training, I'd never had a horse break through the gate like that, come back and win. But she did, and it'll be on to the grade one Jenny Wiley for her next start, a race she also won last year. And uh, good job by the gate crew as well for uh, hanging on to her and not letting her run down, uh, run down the course. So uh, good, uh, good luck for everybody and also great performance. We'll take a look at today's card. And uh, we do start uh, the first on uh, today's card is a 62.50 uh, claiming race, six furlongs on the main track. Uh, my top pick, I went with number six, Scarlet Dixie, uh, getting a, you know, an ease in the in class today. Significant ran for claiming uh, 16,000 claiming uh, last time. I know you went with number three, late to the party. Yeah, late to the party is an aptly named as this horse didn't make his first start until late in his four-year-old year. He's only run three times, but his last race when he uh, won his maiden uh, was his best yet. He got a big number. If he can just come back and complete, uh, uh, repeat that effort, uh, this is a horse that should be improving because he's been lightly raced. I like late to the party. He should get a good trip. The speed looks like it's inside him. Javamine and Iron Ginny. Javamine's coming off a fast work last weekend. Uh, maybe speed on the rail. Perhaps speed on the rail is what you want today. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see how the racetrack does play. But uh, again, if late to the party could just improve off that last race, I think he can win again, or she can win again. On to the second race on today's card, and it is a 16,000 maiden claiming event, one mile on the turf course. Kicks off the early pick four, and uh, there is a jockey, ch uh, jockey change number one. Scorpion Al will be ridden by Abdel Hayen, and also number four, Ronto's Dream, will be ridden by Edgar Zayas, and uh, scratch number nine. And my top choice, I went with number two, Wake Up and Go from the Michael Matz barn. And, uh, Getting Lasix for, uh, excuse me, second time Lasix for this uh, for this start, Mike. Yeah, I agree with you. This horse has run twice on the grass. Both races are good. The second one with Lasix was better than the first one. You know, I just think this horse, uh, again, a, a horse that's sitting on a winning race with another fall would move. Uh, Scorpion Al's a big question mark. They had run two really good grass races against this company, and then last time, inexplicably ran poorly. So. It's just a matter if he can run back to his better races or uh, if last race was an indication that maybe his form is going the other way. We'll find out. And then Ronto Stream, hard to leave out of the equation. This horse seems to run well every time, but he's uh, winless in 14 starts, so probably a pretty good chance he'll be winless after 15, mm -hmm. although uh, with the right trip, he could certainly get the job done here. I threw him on my ticket as well. On to the uh, third race, and it is a 20,000 uh, maiden claiming race, seven furlongs on the main track. And the jockey change, number six, Supreme Privilege, will be ridden by Luis Saez. And uh, my top selection, I went with number four, Oliver Rush. Now, this is a three-year-old gelding or amongst, uh, there's a, a few older horses in here, Mike. Getting a drop back and trip, ran out a mile last time, and dropping back to seven-eighths this time. Yeah, I mean, I think there's two contenders in here. I think it's he and Sneaky Blowout. Sneaky Blowout's getting a lot of class relief also. Comes off the uh, grass, back to the main track. Like the fact that he's going to hook back up uh, with Javier Castellan and Mike Maker. That combination seems almost unbeatable, at least on the turf. This one's on the main track. The main caveats, the inside post going seven-eighths of a mile. Sometimes they don't break so well from the rail going seven-eighths. But if he just runs back to anything resembling his best race, I think he's too fast for these. And on to the fourth race, and it is a 16,000 uh, claiming race. It's a mile on the turf course. If I can actually get there. Yes, we're finally there. And uh, there is a scratch number seven, Dreaming of Danny. And uh, my top pick, I went with number two, Get Back. And I see, Mike, you went in another direction. Yeah, Dreaming of Danny was actually my first choice in here. I thought this was one of those typically wide open turf races. I took a shot with Alicantino now that Dreaming of Danny's out. Looks like the controlling speed in here uh, might get loose on the lead. Uh, you know, I just thought if he can run his best race by relaxing, his uh, previous races on the grass have been against tougher competition than he meets today. So I'm just, this is kind of a pace play for me and a price play. Volcano run, you know, he's pretty logical. Kangaroo, pretty logical. Get back, pretty logical. So the trip will probably decide. And I'm just hoping Alicantino gets that loose on the lead trip for Joe Bravo. And uh, moving on to the fifth race, uh, which kicks off the Rainbow Six. There is a carryover of over $3.3 million. It is a seven furlongs on the main track. 
20,000 climbing event. And uh, my top pick, I went with number one, Concord's March, uh, who I'm hoping, thinking, is going to be showing uh, some speed in here, although there is a little bit of speed in here, Mike, it seems. Yeah, yeah, there is some speed in here, and I'm not quite sure how that speed's going to play out. I took a shot with Courage Belongs. This horse is first time on the main track, first time in the Calabrese and uh, Gammy Vasquez barn. I like the way he's been working on the main track, and I think he should get a nice stalking trip. He's going to have to move forward uh, numbers-wise quite a bit to compete with the best horses in here, but if he takes to the dirt like he's taken to it in the morning, you know, this horse might be a bit of a sleeper. Where I see Ronnie made him 4-1 on in the morning line. I guess that's uh, out of respect for the action that this barn gets because on paper, he looks like he should be a bigger price. So maybe a, bit, a little bit of value. And oohs and ahs to me is a giant question mark for Marty Wilson. Came back from a long layoff, was completely overmatched. The race was much too fast for him. I think he also caught a sloppy track that day. Dropping down to a spot where if he can run any, anything close to his best races, before late up last year, he'll beat these horses. Yeah, and that was one reason that I left him off my ticket because I didn't know what to do with him. He just seems like he, he should be towering over this field, but uh, we'll see. And he's one that I'd want to see in the paddock as well. On to the sixth race on the card, which kicks off the pick five. It is a 12-5 uh, claiming race, uh, six furlongs on the main track. And uh, my top selection, I went with number eight, La Marquesse. And uh, that last race was eased, however, has come back and worked since. And I usually want to see some, at least one published work, one, if they've been eased last time. Actually, they'll usually make them if they're eased. Yeah. They usually have to work uh, for the vet in the morning. So the fact that she's back and able to run today means she uh, satisfied that uh, requirement. I took early glory here. This horse is coming off the claim. They're putting her right back at the same level uh, that she was claimed at. She ran well when she dropped in that day. And I think there's enough speed in here to set up her kick if she can just sit close up, uh, there is a lot of uh, early gas in here. One of those is nothing but tough, who dueled on an extremely fast pace last time and held on uh, pretty well. I, I think uh, from a number standpoint, it was still the best race of her career buyer-wise after a hard duel. So maybe the speed of the speed if she breaks in here. Tough to figure out how this one's going to set up. But uh, I think early glory, if she could repeat her last, might be the right one. And uh, moving on and to the seventh race, and uh, it is a maiden special weight, a mile and a half on the turf course. And this kicks off the late pick four. And uh, my top choice, I went, I tried to, um, I went with a horse that might, maybe might not be the most obvious in here at eight to one on the morning line, number eight, Brilliant M Macy. Uh, this is a colt by Bernardini. He's a half brother to Gallego. Now Gallego was a grade one winner, but he did his best running on the dirt and on the synthetic. And, uh, but I, I, have, I feel that last race, Mike, he had everything going wrong for him. He was on the rail he, that day. He had trouble on the first turn, and we can take a look at that. And also, he had to steady late. But he just, They're he off. seemed to have, uh, you, know, a, you know, a ton of trouble on this day. There's so many things that went wrong f for him. And I think that he's going to run a, a better race this time. I'm hoping he's going to run a better race this time. Yeah, if you, you see, see him it right steadying there. over right, heels right. and ducking out and then back on the... Uh, uh, coming into the stretch here. He, yeah, uh, there you go. And right there again. Steadies again. Yeah. So you're right. He did have a lot of trouble. And he gets um, Dylan Davis. He's in at 111 pounds. So he's getting in a lot lighter than he did last I time. I mean, the too. question with him, like everybody else in here, is will he go a mile and a half? Right. I mean, it's a, that's well, an he's uncharted. By Ber he's by Bernardini, which is another right. reason that I think that he's pretty good. Yeah, in it that is regard. uncharted territory yeah. here. This is also three-year-olds and up. Now, we're starting to see yeah. a bunch of three-year-olds and up races in here. I'm not so sure that three-year-olds are at a disadvantage in six furlongs in a mile. I don't know about it a mile and a half, though. That's asking an awful lot to me of a three-year-old uh, to go three turns this early in their career against older horses. So I took a couple of the older ones in here, Pappy and uh, Boss Man. I'm going to go with Pappy. He's by Dynaformer. Dynaformer, and I was talking with our buddy uh, uh, Stephen Skaggs this morning. Dynaformer going three turns. No he problem. thinks is uh, right up his alley. Right. Pappy's already run two good races. This is the third race of his career. So I like Pappy. I like Boss Man. And Unicat is a three-year-old going up against Older. But he does have speed. He has a race under his belt. He's getting Lasix for the first time, which we know is a big angle uh, with some of these Kieran McLaughlin horse. And Luis Saez is back today. I wanted to mention that earlier after taking most of the last week off. So I'm looking for Unicat, maybe Diker Beach to go to the lead, 
and Pappy and Boss Man to pick them up. And Unicat, very nicely bred. Uh, the mare is a daughter of Spain. She was a grade one winner, Breeders' Cup champion. The mare was uh, purchased for $2.55 million by Adina Springs, by Stronic, and uh, this carrying uh, this foal. So it'll be interesting to see if this, uh, this colt can and get Unicat back. And Unicat is by Galileo, who is a world-class sire, and mile and a half should be no problem there either. I, I agree with you, absolutely. That'll be a very interesting heat. On to the eighth race on today's card. It is a 100,000 allowance optional claiming one mile on the main track. And uh, my top, uh, there is one scratch, number five, Dreaming of Sophia. And uh, my top choice, I went with number three, Lady Cohiba. And look, we're in total agreement, Mike, right across the board. Yeah, this is an interesting race because you got Lady Cohiba, uh, Cohiba and Villa Bellagio, a couple of old class horses, one who hasn't run in a while, Lady Cohiba. The other, Villa Villaggio, who hasn't run well in a while, although his last two races have been on the grass, and this is back to the dirt. And then you have Sonia's Angel, who's won her last four starts over this track going back to last year and won them all pretty easily, but has taken a huge jump up in class. She has the numbers to compete here, but does she have the class? I went for the class. I went for Lady Cohiba. It's Chris Clamano off the layoff, so not worried about that at all. First time in an allowance race in a long, long time. He should be ready, or she should be ready. Joel Rosario up, just gets the trip. I think Lady Cohiba will assert her class and win. And again, like you, I have Villa Villaggio and Sonia's Angel to fill out the top three. On to the ninth race on the card. It is a, a starter optional claiming event, a claiming price of $20,000. Five furlongs on the turf course. And there is a scratch number 10, Dominant Jeans from the also eligibles uh, entered as main track only. And my top choice, I went with number nine, and that is Drunken Love, who's going to probably be, uh, it looks like going to be showing speed for Jamie Ness. Yeah, he's going to be out in the lead again if he breaks like he did last time. Last time he actually beat the gate. He was two in front of everybody before the rest of the field seemed to get their legs under him, and he was able to hold on. If he does that again today, he's going to win. If somebody hooks him, maybe it'll help Thomas Hill, who's knocking on the door, who's running well, who's ready to win one of these with any kind of trip and any kind of pace set up in front of him. I think one of those two will win. Didn't take it. Also runs well in this category. Throw out his last. He had a horrible trip. He gets steadied a bunch of times. Really never had a chance. Mike, those, does Thomas Hill any concerns with that, uh, those uh, three second place efforts? Because I've been on his bandwagon the last couple of times and I keep getting beat. Yeah, you know, once they start doing that, I usually tend to go against them. I just took a shot here because of the price. He'll be a little bit bigger price than Drunken Love and maybe Drunken Love won't get that early break and uh, get out there so easily and maybe uh, Thomas Hill can turn the tables. And on to the 10th and final race. It is a 25,000 starter optional claiming one mile on the turf course. Scratch number five, six, and number 12. And uh, Mike, it looks like we both went with number nine, Angel South uh, from the Giuseppe de Cernia barn, going to be showing speed. I think this one will probably be favorite too. Yeah, she makes a lot of sense in here. She's coming off a good second, or a good effort behind jo uh, Ready Signal. Ready Signal is really sharp right now, so... This is a drop in class for Angel South. You know, the, she's got to go out there and repeat that race. That's the question mark at a fairly short price. But if she does, I think she's the one to beat. I like uh, CC and Red is also dropping out of those uh, pretty tough two other than uh, high priced optional claimers. And the same with Will to Shine. So I think those three are the class of the race, and one of those three will win. The best trip will probably get the money. But uh, Angel South, I think, is a little bit better of the trio if she gets around there clean. Well, that's it for Mike Welsh and myself. And uh, anything else, Mike, you want to say? In terms of the, the racetrack, the way it's been playing, you said it's just been speed, speed, speed. So we've got to watch the first. Seems to be favoring speed, both the main track and the turf. It's, the turf's been on a bit of the hard side. It got some rain yesterday, but not a lot that I think would change that. Of course, we don't see any workouts on the turf in the morning, except uh, occasionally on Sundays this morning. The main track was fast again. So... Um, you know, until I see otherwise, I'm looking for that same trend to continue on both courses. Well, that's it for Mike, who will be back with us and join us on Saturday. Ron Nicoletti will join us uh, just in a few moments. And folks, I hope you stick around. Good luck, everybody.